In the last study of the day, we looked at the happiness paradox and a study that showed that overvaluing happiness can actually create conditions where you're more likely to feel symptoms of depression. So today, we dive into the world of parasites and don't be surprised if the information in the study shocks you. I'm Dr. Ben and thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. I believe that people make the best decisions for their health when they have the best information available. And herein lies the mission of this channel, to empower you with health information. If you have unanswered health questions and you haven't subscribed already, please consider clicking below and join a community of people who expect more from their health care. But without further ado, let's look at today's study of the day. Okay, so I absolutely love this study. This study is called The Seasonal Prevalence of Intestinal Parasites in the United States in 2000. And it is one of the only large-scale prevalence studies done that looks at parasite infections in North America. There is a gross underestimation by the general public in the frequency of these parasite infections, um, especially in North America. One of the greatest myth truths that I've encountered in my practice um, is that because we live in North America, it's virtually impossible to acquire a parasite infection and in that parasite infections are only acquired um, in developing countries. But this couldn't be further from the truth and what we find in this study and the statistics that were collected um, in that year will blow that myth apart. If someone were to ask me what sets my practice apart from other healthcare providers, I would simply say parasites. And this isn't an exaggeration. I think one of the reasons why I've had the good fortune of building a successful practice is because as I'm examining that patient and their concerns for causative factors, I acknowledge the role or at least the possibility that parasites may be playing. So let's jump right into the experiment. A total of about 5,700 stool samples or fecal specimens were collected from about 2,800 patients. Um, between the, the months of January and December 2000. Of the 2,896 patients that were tested, 916 of them showed positive to intestinal parasites. That's 32% of all the patients that had their stool collected um, showed at least one parasite infection and sometimes more. And in these 32%, the most common parasite identified was blastocystis. And that is a very common intestinal worm that, that I've found many times in my practice before. So this prevalence information is all fine and good, but what does that mean to you? Um, why don't we take a moment and look at the symptoms that were found uh, most commonly with the patients that were found to have intestinal worms. Symptoms were split into two categories. Symptoms of the intestinal tract and systemic symptoms. Symptoms that were outside of the intestinal tract. The gastrointestinal symptoms included gas, flatulence, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, cramping, constipation, malabsorption, bloody stool, mucousy stool, and leaky gut. And symptoms that were systemic or outside of the intestinal tract included fatigue, and this was an order of prevalence, fatigue, nervousness, sensory disorders, or nervous system or sensory disorders, pain, skin disorders, allergies, nausea, muscle weakness, immune deficiencies, headache, fever or night sweats, and weight changes. Of the 826 patients with single infections, 584 or 70% of them experienced overt symptoms and 242, or 30%, had none. So the people with, with infections, 70% were demonstrating symptoms, 30% were showing no symptoms or were, were asymptomatic. The results also showed that 10% of the 30% that were identified to have parasite infections were showing two or four different parasites. So they weren't just showing one single parasite. The other interesting finding in this study 
was that the most frequent time to show a parasite infection was between August and October. And it was quietest, or they were less frequent, to be found in the winter. One in three people, in my opinion, is highly conservative, considering that this 30% number is just looking at intestinal infections. Consider for a moment that parasites can be in the brain, they can be in the heart, they can be in the liver, they can be in the stomach, they can be in the kidneys or adrenals. All of a sudden, it's, it's not hard to believe, and it stands to reason, that that number could go from one in three to easily one in two. 50% of the population could easily be carrying a, a parasite when you consider the intestinal numbers with the systemic numbers. But even if we are looking at one in three as the prevalence rate, it's critical to ask the question, are my symptoms being caused by, or are they being contributed by, a parasite infection? Okay, so here's the homework. I want you to ask yourself, do I have any of these identified symptoms? Do I have any of the intestinal symptoms? Symptoms like gas, diarrhea, constipation, mucus in the stool, um, irritable bowel, um, blood in the stool, or leaky gut, sim uh, leaky gut symptoms? And, and do I have any systemic symptoms? Um, the fatigue, the, the neurological symptoms, the pain, skin disorders, um, allergies, nausea, weakness, um, headache, night sweats. Um, start by looking at your body and looking at your symptoms and see if any of them fall under these descriptions. Then ask yourself, are my symptoms worse at night? Um, do I have any dark circles under my eyes? Am I experiencing any nightmares more than I normally do? Um, do my symptoms cycle? Are they good one month and then bad the next? Because these all could be an indication that you are carrying an intestinal infection. So if you have any of these symptoms and have treated these symptoms in the past unsuccessfully, it stands to reason that you should explore parasite testing. And one of the best labs to do this is through Doctors Data. And they offer a test um, called Comprehensive Stool Analysis plus Parasitology. And I'll link them in the description below the video. And lastly, it's important to realize that it's, it's very difficult to definitively diagnose a systemic parasite infection. It's, it's easy to, to take a fecal specimen and, and analyze it for, for, a, for a parasite, but it's very, very hard to diagnose a liver parasite or a heart parasite or a lung parasite or a kidney parasite. There just aren't tests sensitive enough to pick up this information. So because of that, we need to use clinical information, um, symptoms primarily, to, to base our, our parasite treatment decisions. So regardless of if you have a definitive parasite diagnosis or not, um, it makes sense to me that once a year, between August and October, take six weeks and do a parasite treatment. But better yet, find a licensed healthcare practitioner who can help you out with, with diagnostics and this comprehensive stool testing and start to look at whether or not these symptoms that you experience are being caused by a parasite because it's, it's very likely that they may. And that is another study of the day. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll be happy to respond. Um, if you haven't taken the time already, please subscribe to my channel and stay on top of, of the study of the day.